identify. And actually, when you first learned about solving equations, a lot of the equations were so basic, you guys just did them in your head, right? And so a lot of times we could just say, well, the you know, easiest thing I could probably do would be you know, just to guess and check. Right? And say, what number squared equals 1? And then you just think about number squared and you say, oh, OK, well, you know, x equals plus or minus 1. Seems pretty simple. x equals 1 and x equals negative 1. Agreed? Kind of simple. Don't really need to be doing much. But what we realized is where what we wanted to teach is, guys, we don't want you to rely on guess and check because, as you guys have noticed this year, problems get much more complicated. So we want to make sure we have some techniques to be able to solve that. Agreed? All right. So one of the first techniques that we, that we practiced was using inverse operations. Since we only have one x, right, we can just use inverse operations. So we'd square root both sides. But remember, we talked about this in this class. Whenever you introduce the square root, x is equal to plus or minus 1. Right? And again, another thing too is what, you know, when you have these complicated problems, guessing is not always good, right? If you remember for like rational expressions, like you have extraneous solutions, like guessing is not always going to be the best idea, especially when you get into more complicated problems. So this was great, inverse operations. But then once we got into more quadratic, more quadratics in standard form, once we had more than one x, you couldn't just fat, you just couldn't take the square root, right? This happens all the time, students, you know, x squared plus x. I add in another x, and people are still trying to, and you can't do that anymore. Now you have to factor, right? So um, then we learned into, well, if you factor, we can solve by factoring by setting something equal to 0. If you have the product, which is factoring, right? Factoring is the idea or the practice of writing an expression as a product. So if you take an expression and you write it as a product and that product is equal to 0, then you can apply the zero product property. So our goal with solving via factoring was to set the equation or the expression equal to 0. Now I look to factor this, which in this case I have x minus 1 times x plus 1 equals 0. Now I can set, now I can apply the zero product property. And you say, okay, very good. Everything's kind of making a little sense kind of here, right? Kind of? Yes, no, maybe so. Um, and therefore, that would go ahead and, and solve. So the algebraic techniques, um, those went ahead and worked perfectly. And hopefully, you guys are fairly familiar with those. If I gave you this problem, I'm assuming you guys probably chose one of those three spots to find, figure out your answer. right? But remember, we can also solve using a graphing technique. And this isn't something we've spent a lot of time in this class, because obviously, we haven't been doing a lot of graphing. But you know, if we think about this, we can always write an equation, or we can always solve something as an equation. Or at least, let's kind of go back to algebra 1. Like, what if I said y equals x squared and y equals 1? Like, let's remember, this is, a, this is an identity, right? Or at least a conditional identity. x squared is equal to 1. So if we have an equation, do you guys remember having equations where you had two different equations and you're trying to find their intersection points? Remember systems of equations? right? So you could graph the line y equals 1, and you could graph the function y equals x squared, and then figure out where they intersect. Now, knowing what this graph looks like, y equals x squared we know looks like this. And then y equals 1 is over here. So now we just need to figure out where are those intersection points, right? Based on systems of equations, those are the solutions, right? And thankfully, this is not very difficult. We know that the quadratic goes over 1, up 1, negative over 1, up 1. And this is obviously at, lot, at 1. And therefore, you can see that the x values for where these solutions are are plus or minus 1. Yes? This is just graphing, just a graphing technique. But we really haven't used that. that. That's been a long time since we did systems of equations. We haven't even touched systems of equations this chapter. What you guys are probably more familiar with is when you set this equal to 0, then you could say, why don't I graph y equals x squared minus 1 and find the solution for when y is equal to 0? Right? And remember, that's what we talked about as far as finding the zeros. So if I graph y equals x squared minus 1, that's basically this graph just being shifted down 1. Right? Or if we put it this way, when we graph this, we'd set it equal to 0, right? And then set it equal to y. And then what are we trying to find? We're trying to find these zeros, right? Or the solutions to the equation. What are the solutions that make the equation true?
when basically it's set equal to 0. So we'd like set it equal to 0 and go ahead and solve. Like Those are the zeros. Those are the x-intercepts. That's what we spent our time in polynomials. So actually, I should have done this one before this one. But this is one you guys are familiar with. We did it in chapter 2. Here, familiar with. But this is something that we haven't really talked about that's actually going to be very useful for us in this chapter. So that's why I wanted to kind of cover it. Okay.